Corinthians chapter 6 in the Word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 in God's Word. You know, this morning I, I was so last the weekend has been quite busy for me. I went to London. My sister got engaged. We, there was a lot going on and so we had to come back. So travel back in the night when it was the wind was violent and the rain, so we only got in late for midnight. And so I just thank God that we we're able to hear the message this morning. Amen. Amen. And so I was like, God, help me. I'm struggling. Uh -uh. God, I need a message tonight. So, you know, sometimes I need to take the wife out. That's some inspiration. <laughs> so we went out, we were not doing, you know, you know what that means. So, that's a new term. <laughs> so whilst we were at Nando's, there was, and I, I've seen this before, I have to be honest with you, almost every Sunday I see it, you know, and so there were the gypsies, you know, the kids, you see them. I mean, they are very distinct. You cannot... They have a unique look. You know what I'm talking about. And you know, it's, it's, it's a number of them were there. I mean, my wife was wondering what's the occasion. I'm like, man, they come here every Sunday. It's the, and I see all the time. And there are times where I take preachers who go to Nando's to eat. And afterwards, the security have to come out and tell all of them to get out. And there are loads of them. And man, the way the ladies dress, they are proud of themselves. I mean, they might dress a certain way that might shock us, but I mean, they uphold a certain standard, which is, it doesn't make sense to how they dress, but nevertheless, we've had a number of gypsies here, so I'm quite familiar with how they do things and certain things. But one of the things that I just found very amazing about them is the fact that they don't care what you think. Have you noticed that? They don't care, they just up and down, uh, uh, the ladies who dress a certain way, they're, they're walking up and down, they're talking, uh, and they're getting together, and, they, and they're amongst themselves, they run up and down, they make noise, and the youthfulness, they're loud, you know, youth, there's always loudness, that's not a problem, that's part of being youthful. They don't care what people think. And as I was looking at that, you know, God just gave me a revelation, you know what? They don't care being different. They have no concern in people looking at them. They know people are looking at them there. These people are different and they don't care. You know what the problem is? It's when Christians are too concerned about what people think out there in the world. And so they don't care what people think. Uh, they act a certain way. Now some of their dressing is, is not great at all. But nevertheless, they just do what they do they function the way they function and I, and i just found it interesting uh, i mean some of them you know if you just look you see massive big eyelashes they're uh, just protruding out you know what i'm talking about the 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 the, 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 the what do you call it these um got it. makeup makeup anyway <laughs> I wish I know what the, the things that ladies use, but I don't, you know. It's a, the red tight dressing that's very, and, it, and they walk you like every minute, something is gonna, the skirt is gonna tear because it's just so tight. And high heels, oh, they just God. do what they want. They run up and down. They might break the, the heel, but they don't care. They just keep on uh, doing what they do. And the guys, some of them, they dress, you know, the hairstyle might look like, uh, we express it sometimes and trying to, you know, model after it. And to me, I, I find it interesting, I have to be honest. And I look at them and I'm like, man, these folks don't even care. They don't care what people think. They like being unique and being different. And sometimes they will come into Nando's and 10 of them will just walk in and they will bounce up and down. Uh, and they're not concerned about people looking. Uh, they sit down, they make their noise, they eat their stuff, they get out, they do this and that, and the security comes up. And it's almost like they're enjoying it. Like, man, we enjoy this. We like the attention. They like being different. And so I want to preach today a very different sermon on celebrate your difference. Hello? Now, the moment I said that, I know what's going to be going through some people's minds. Because 
you know when I do some of these messages and I get the title, I like to put a, how can I say, I like to put an image uh, to it in the beginning. And I go on, online on Google and search an image. And the moment I search celebrating difference, you know what comes up? Yeah. It's all the colors and I'm like, God, help us, Jesus. They're not going to hijack this again. And I thought, I'm not changing my sermon title. It is what it is. The word celebrate is a good word. The word difference is a good word. It doesn't have to be hijacked by the gay love. You know what I'm talking about. I don't want to go there. Amen. 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 But what I'm trying to say is God has made us to be different. Yes. Now the scripture I'm going to be reading is kind of, it sounds contrary to what I'm saying. But I, I couldn't shake this scripture up. I was in the prayer room and uh, God just kept on this scripture, this scripture, this scripture. I couldn't get away from it. So we're going to read the scripture and you know what? Whatever God speaks to us, we'll flow with it. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 18. Follow along with me. Paul speaks to the church. He says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has a temple of God and idols for you are the temple of the living God as God has said I will dwell in them and walk among them I will be their God and they shall be my people therefore come out from among them and be separate says the Lord and do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you and you and I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters says the Lord Almighty. Amen. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we come before you this evening. We thank you for your grace and your mercy for everyone here today. Those have been able to make it. Lord, I pray that you will speak to each and every one of us, O oh Lord, as you deem every one of us important in your sight. Lord, we pray that you will move tonight. Speak to us. Uh, we thank you, God, for all that you've done in our lives. In Jesus' name. The Corinthian church is not a strange church. If you read the New Testament, you would find that Paul took time to write to this church because the church constantly had problems. Paul did not dismiss them as not the people of God. Paul was not angry at them because they embarrassed God. Paul understood that as they have come to Christ, there were a number of things they, that has to be dealt with as things would arise. Paul would write to them. Now, at this point, whenever you see epistles written by Paul, that tells you something. Paul is not around. It wasn't like Paul was on a missionary journey. Paul was in prison many of the times. He was locked up because he preached the gospel. And because he preached the gospel, he was held captive and in prison. And hence, he would write these epistles up. And some of the soldiers, he went to Christ. He would have them go and deliver that message to the church. There was a time he had Timothy. Timothy would take the message and, uh, uh, and other people um, that were around him and people that came to visit him, they would take these messages. And what would happen on a typical Sunday, which is referred to as the first day of a week, is the minister would get up and they would read the epistles of Paul. They would read it to the church. Hence, comments have been made when Paul finally came out and he ministered to the church that the people were surprised. He had a timid, I guess maybe his, the way he was, I don't know if he, had, he was frail, but certainly they passed a comment on the fact that his letters are more weighty than his person. Maybe to Paul was a mild um, speaker, but his letters were not mild. They were like your thunder preacher kind of messages. So though we read it now, back then when they would, when this was read to them, it was weighty. It was heavy. It meant something. It touched them and it brought conviction to their hearts. I just wanted to lay that found that that, that background for us to understand. And so what would happen here is this was written to the church because of things going on at certain times in the church. And so, uh, you know, the writing here tells us very clearly, do not be unequally yoked. 
together with unbelievers. And what was said here is almost like some things are going on. And, uh, and Paul has written this by the Spirit of the Lord. And you would read uh, uh, some of the words there in capital and italic, which means they were taken from the Old Testament. So as Paul was writing this, remember they didn't have the New Testament. Like we, we have it. So we have the Old and New Testament. Back then, they would have the Old Testament. And even as they had the Old Testament, people didn't have that in their homes. That took a while. That was in the synagogue. And, and Paul was, obviously he had read some of these. And so he's writing and giving a quotation from the Old Testament. Just like you would write. And if they told you to put together a dissertation. And you would do and you make references. And you bring quotes. Uh, uh, and uh, you have to make sure you, you put all your references down. To make sure it's validated. You, you understand what I'm talking about? And so... This is what Paul is doing. Paul is quoting from the Old Testament. And what he's saying here, he's quoting, he's not just saying his words, uh, he's saying his words, but backing it up with God's word. So Paul says, do not be unequally yoked uh, together with unbelievers. What fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What Paul is saying is, you've got to be separate. You've got to be different. God has called you to be different. And perhaps the uh, Corinthians might have struggled with this whole issue about being different. You see, you're not different when you're trying to please the world. I mean, we all understand that's very easy to understand. You, you're not, we're, we're not different if we're trying to please the world. We're not, we're not different if there's nothing different between us and the common sinner. We're not different uh, if we are trying to conform to the world and we're being controlled by the world. We are not different if we are living in sin. What makes you different and what makes, what makes you unique? What makes you separate when you, when you say you, you know, you're a Christian and you go to church? It should be how you live your life. Amen? It should be that's what makes you different. That's why Paul was trying to tell them, and he then quoted what God already said to his people. Come out from among them, verse 17, and, uh, and be separate. He says, you've got to be separate. You have to separate yourselves. See, there was one time that the children of Israel, after they, God had helped them and delivered them and all was well, that they started taking on wives for themselves from the daughters of the heathens, those are the Hittites, the Parasites, Jebusites, and, uh, uh, and they started taking daughters and they would they take them and they would marry them. And when God's word finally came, it was so it was so striking uh, that they had to separate themselves. I and mean, when you read scriptures, it feels like well, it has to be strong because in the Old Testament everything was physical. I mean, it was spiritual, but manifesting itself in a physical form such as how you serve God, what you do. It was all physical, but has a spiritual meaning to it. In the New Testament now, it's not so much physical. It's a lot more spiritual and, of course, uh, grace. So follow along with me. If we are going to be different, we have to understand there is something about us that is unique and important. Something about us that is so unique uh, that, you know, it would cause uh, the unbeliever uh, to wonder. It is good to go into a workplace, you are new in a workplace, uh, and people instantly look at you and say, there's something different about you. It's not like the way you dressed were different. It wasn't like you had a specific hairstyle. You know, Christians, uh, when they get saved, they have a unique hairstyle. It's not that. It's not like you look, no, it's just there is something different about you. You have the Spirit of God in you. Are you with me? And also because you have the Spirit of God, the way you live your life is different. You know what you shouldn't do? Don't hide it. Look at someone today and say, don't hide it. Do not hide it. You're supposed to be celebrating the fact that you are saved. It is a new day that Christ is in our lives and we are rejoicing. It is something to celebrate. 
It is not something to be hiding. It's not something that you are ashamed of. This is why Paul said in Romans 1.16, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to those that believe. In simple terms, he is saying, I'm not ashamed of this. I am happy to carry the badge of I am saved and born again. I am happy to carry the biggest Bible and people know I'm going to church. I am happy for everyone to know that I am saved and born again and on my way to heaven. Sometimes it's sad when you see, you go to outreach or outreach in the sea center and you see, see, young people are very image conscious. You notice that? That's why they want every clothes, shoes, everything has to have the Nike logo on it. The tick. They, they haven't actually done any research where the tick came from. What it represents. And is it linked to some god, god or goddess of something? That's a hint. Go and do your research. But anyway, they have not even thought about where it came from. But I just want the tick on it. The shirt has to be Nike. The trainers has to be Nike. And some of them, they make sure the tag is hanging. You know what I'm talking about. Because that gives, you know, respect. This is Gucci, Imani. Hey, they forgot. Do you actually know who those people are? Mm -hmm. You don't know where they're coming. Anyway, let's not go there. But anyway, they want the take on. They want the, the, the nice that, that logo that speaks something. I want to follow... Follow along with me today. They want that. Now, that is young people. That's not a problem. I was like that when I was young, and I'm sure all of us when we're, when we're young are like that. And if you're still young and like that, that's fine. No one's saying you should change that. I'm just saying when a, your person is young, they're proud of the things that makes them young. Now, they don't like if parents try to save money. Come on, let's go to the you know, the marketplace and buy, you know, the t-shirt is the same as black, but it's one pound. No, mom, I want that one. That's 50,000, it's got the Nike, Nike logo on it. You know what I'm talking about? Because they want, they don't want to be embarrassed and ashamed when they're meeting with their friends and there's no Nike logo. They're not, they haven't got the jacket that has the right thing on it. They don't have one that says this. They want to have the latest iPhone, they don't want some nasty old Android phone that, you know, is from, guess what, some back end of China somewhere. They don't want that, they want the iPhone, the latest. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. That's how it goes. They want to be proud. At some point, children don't like it when the parents walk them to school and say, I'm going to walk you almost, you know, some parents, you know, I was like, nah, that's a change. They want to walk their kids almost right into class. Oh, no, you can leave me now. Just go, bye, just go on. Sometimes I just drop me in, I'll walk to school. Just drop me. They want to feel free and independent. And that's good. That's fine. We all, all like that. There's nothing wrong with that. Because you want to be proud. You don't want to be ashamed. You don't want to feel ashamed. You want to make sure you hold your own. As believers, that is how we should be. You know, Jesus made it so strong when he made his statement. He says, if you cannot confess me before men, I'm not going to confess you before my Father in heaven. It was because it, it speaks volumes of when you can stand and say, I'm proud of this person. I'm proud. I don't care what anyone says. This is my brother. This is my sister. This is where I come from. This is my background. See, some folks are trying to run away from where they're from. They're trying to run away and they act like they are not from there. Hello. There's some things that can't change. I mean, you can't change where you're from. There's, you know, some, there's some things that run through your veins. You can't change it. You can't change your color scheme. Hello? We're not playing a race here. I'm just, you know, illustration. 
purpose. You know, you can't change your color screen. There's no point putting your screen to try and make yourself lighter and lighter. Yeah. So you're hurting yourself, and yeah. folks don't realize that. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. I remember years back when my friends and I, we obviously we were born in England, but raised in Africa, and then we came back. And, and one of our friends, he had been here for give and take three months. So we came and met him, and the guy was trying, he was trying to talk as if he was, he had been here all his life. I'm like, oh, what happened to you? And he's putting on, have you ever seen someone trying to put, put on an accent? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the, we had another guy, one of friend of ours that, he just went to America for two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. He came back and I'm like, what? You could have, your accent couldn't have changed that quick. It's not possible. You just spent two weeks and all of a sudden, uh, you're American. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like I'm ashamed of my uh, you know, African accent. I don't want to speak the Zulu way. <laughs> I've seen people that they're so ashamed they would do anything to try and fit in. They would do anything to fit in. Anything to fit in. Now when they get to school or college or uni, so how was your weekend? Oh, it was fine, it was not, nothing much. And what did you do? Oh, I just stayed home all day. They forgot that their friend saw them walk into church. <laughs> Hello? They saw them walk into church and they, they saw them come out and they knew they were in church for hours. So they asked them, so what did you do on Sunday? Oh, home all day. Not much happening, I was just chilling. <laughs> oh really? I thought I saw you. I thought I thought I saw you in that happy clappy place. <laughs> and I, oh really? Uh, maybe it was someone like me. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Instead of being proud of it, amen. Instead of saying, you know what, yes, I went to church and it was great. Why don't you come along with me and see what it's like? <laughs> Gotta be proud of what God has done in you. I mean, Jesus gave himself on the cross. He he came all the way from heaven, came down, and was able to feel the pains and the feelings of Mankind went on the cross, did all of that for us, and we can't simply rejoice and say, I'm a Christian. Hello? You know, so strange. People that, you know, we know to be terrorists and they, they just want to kill people and cause mayhem, they are not concerned what you think. They are bold of what they think, even though their minds have been corrupted, even though their ideology is wrong, and it's, 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 it's been, you know, just, they don't care. They don't care, and they will dress a certain way up, they will make noise, and they're ready to kill people and cause mayhem in the name of whatever God they think they're serving. But Christians that are full of the Holy Spirit, have the blood of Jesus and the love of God like to hide. You see, when you celebrate and you know who you are and you celebrate, you're not so much concerned about what people are going to say because you want to celebrate. Yeah. You see, in some cultures, they don't like to celebrate quietly. I think some of you would know that. When they want to celebrate, maybe they had a Birth or maybe a birthday or wedding or some important thing, they make a big show of it. Mm -hmm. They make sure everyone knows. Now, my parents from Nigeria, I spent some time in Nigeria, and you know, Nigerians are different. And uh, you could think you know something about it, but you don't because there's so many, there are quite a number of tribes, you know, there are three main ones, and then there are sub tribes. But where I'm from, they love to celebrate. And when they love to celebrate, they like to celebrate big. They want to make a big show of it to the extent that they will close the whole street. They will put, I'm talking about, in my, 
80s, uh, boys get married to girl, really, the whole street is closed. I mean, that's back then, they would set up tanks and everything, and it's not just they're feeding 400 people, they can feed thousands, everyone's gonna come out, and they're gonna make sure everyone sees, and during the celebration, they didn't, they didn't even bring the currency of a country out. The currency of a country is too demeaning. They bring dollars and pounds, and they spray that. And what I mean to spray, there. So, Nathan, come. Oh, that's a good brother right there. So, Nathan's getting married. And let's say my brother Nathan is uh, from my town. So, everyone's dancing, they're coming around, and Nathan is kind of taking a few moves with him and his bride. And they come with lots of money. Brand new, you know. Brand new, not, not old, brand new, and they're spraying Nathan one by one, big notes, and it's on the floor, it drops, and people, well, people that he has designated, not anyone, will collect all the money, and they have it in a big, and everyone's spraying, and so he can take time being sprayed, and all his wedding is paid for, just by spray. You can sit down. <laughs> It is a big show. They're ready, they're proud. The parents are proud that their son or daughter is getting married. They have it. It's the biggest day. I mean, you see the mom like, no, 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 no. I'm taking care of all of this stuff. And the dad's like, no, 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 you're not doing it. I'm taking care of this. I'm going to go. I'm, I'm spending money. And they will go all, I'm talking about no joke, all out. During, during the, the wedding, they can change three, four times. Yeah. Different outfit, expensive, not cheap. Different. Some of the outfit like two, three hundred, four hundred pounds each. I mean, they just are all out crazy. Because they're not ashamed. They're not ashamed. That's just they want to show this is who we are. They might be loud and bold, but they're showing it. This is who we are. Is it that you accept it? Or you leave it. Hello? We're not willing to compromise because we're too concerned about what you think. We are going to celebrate, and if you come from a different culture, you'll be forced to like our culture. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just the imposing way, in a good sense, I and mean, sometimes it's elements of pride, we understand that. But it's, it's just what I'm trying to say is they celebrate their difference. If you go to another side of a country, you will find a different, I mean, whether it's the evils, they, they have a certain way and they will celebrate their difference too. They have a, the unique way of how they dress, the way they greet each other and certain things that they say. They, and they enjoy that. They're not ashamed of where they're from or who they are. You know, I thought about the Jews for a moment. Very interesting group, but blessed by God. And I couldn't help that I have to mention them because the Jews, let me just read this to you, which is staggering. I mean, this is Jews all around the world. They, they are about 13.5 million Jews around the world. So in Israel, there's 5.7 million Jews. In America, it's amazing. In Israel, 5.7 million in America, 5.6 million, kind of like almost the same. In Russia, there's about half a million. In France, half a million in Russia and France, and in the UK, there's about 280,000. That's about slightly over a quarter of a million. In Germany, there's about 200,000. But you know what's so amazing? 13.5 million. That's not a lot. I have to be honest with you, not a lot at all. But out of the UK, out of the 105 strong top rich people, the richest of the rich, the Jews top it, 20%. And when you go in the world, they, they have won more things, they have done more things. Wherever the Jews go, they want to change things. Now let me, this is, this is truth. Wherever they go, they want to change things. Now, they're not imposing. 
but they do it in a different way. They want to change things, and everywhere they go, they make a difference. I was reading something how uh, the you know the Courtney accent in London uh, has been highly influenced by Jews. Some of the things that we don't know. Did you know the fish and chips came from the Jews? Uh huh. You know, folks eat fish and chips. You know, they brought it to England. They brought quite a number of things uh, to the UK and made a serious impact. I mean, they are a small group, but they make a serious impact. Also in America, I mean, rich, uh, you know, just so much richness, and they influence things in every way, whether it's in education, whether it's in the, uh, the IT industry, or the, uh, you know, they, they influence in so many ways. I read this, which was quite interesting. Is it a story? The Jews tell the story. So the story is told in several uh, in cultural variations. Now, hear this one. It's told in cultural variations of a Jewish man spotting a friend reading an Arabic newspaper. Mosik, you have lost your mind, he says. Well, now, the reason why he said that is because his friend is reading an Arabic newspaper. He's a Jew. So his Jewish friend is reading an Arabic newspaper, and he told him, you've lost your mind. And so the guy replied, well, I used to read Jewish papers, and what did I find? Jews being persecuted, Israel being attacked, Jews disappearing, Jews living in poverty. So I switched to an Arab newspaper. Listen to this. Now, what do I find? Jews owning banks. Jews controlling the media, Jews all are all rich and powerful, Jews ruling the world, the news is so much better. And what he was saying to his friend, and this is uh, something that they, they, they would read, um, uh, uh, they're saying basically, uh, man, it's so good to read the Arab newspapers because they're too scared of the Jews. All they talk about is Jews are taking over banks. Jews are doing this, uh, and Jews are owning this, and they want to control the world, uh, and they're panicking, uh, and they want to do away with Israel, uh, and all of this. Because the enemy even knows how powerful they are. You know what would be good? For the enemy to know how powerful you are in Christ. For the enemy to know. You see, you can't have power over the enemy if the enemy has got you under lockdown. What I'm really trying to say, you can't have power over the enemy if the enemy is feeding you. Are you with me? You can't try and celebrate the difference that makes you separate from the world if you are completely enraptured in what the world does. If you are completely engulfed in the world's ways. Now, let me draw this to a close very quickly. See, our difference, your difference will count. And the difference I'm talking about is our difference in Christ. Because first of all, we are all different anyway as human beings. Amen? We might have the same features in many ways, but they're kind of in different size. You understand me? <laughs> my nose is not, uh, some, some of you, my nose is bigger than yours. So I, I'm happy with my nose. I don't need plastic surgery to make it thinner, you know, shrink it, to try and make it look like. You get my point? I don't mind my ears. It might be big and make me look different, but I'm happy with my ears. Hello? I don't, I'm not concerned about my lips. Well, it's not big enough. It needs to be big and it makes it that when someone looks at it, they feel like it's chocolate. Oh, that's nasty. No, my, my lips are fine. <laughs> It is just perfect as it is. You know, I, 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 I also read something some time back uh, that parents, this is where I find, find it very sad, and in the UK, parents are buying presents for their children. Lip surgery, Botox surgery, and this surgery, and that surgery, and the daughter, oh, what's your present for Christmas? Uh, oh, go, uh, go do a book job, and go do this job, and that job. I'm like, this is sad. And that's the problem. When people don't like how they are, how God has made them, that they think they need to change to become something else. 
You need to celebrate who you are and thank God for it. Amen. So we're talking about in Christ, in Jesus. The Bible says we are new creation. Amen. Amen. Now let's kind of complete that. What, what does it say next? Let's see. Come on. All things have passed away. All things have become new. So yes, we are new in Christ. We are new creatures in Christ. Now, we might have the same old body, but inside of us we're different. We were up before, we were, you know, a robber, we were a thief, we were we were doing all sorts, we were party goer, we were out fornicating and doing all sorts and lying and stealing. But now in Jesus, we are righteous and holy and different. That's why your friends can look at you and say there's something different about you. Now what happened to you? What, what did you do? Well, Jesus. You see, to make your difference count, you must make your difference felt. Let me say that today again. To make your difference count, you must make your difference felt. Some Christians want to hide at home and in the church. Hello. Very comfortable at home. You know, home is comfortable. Very comfortable in the church. Because everyone around you are Christians. You are in a common area, well, in an area of the familiar where everyone else kind of believes the same thing. They, they roll with you, you roll with them, all is well. But your difference is not so much felt where everyone's kind of the same as you. Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. They're, they're the same as you, you think the same, they think the same, they hear the word of God, they do the same. Your difference can't be felt. Your difference has to be felt when you're out there in the world. That's why we don't get, when we get saved immediately, Jesus doesn't just take us home instantly. And that is why God never sent angels to preach the gospel. It is that mightily hard for you to hear what someone says, well, yeah, you know what, uh, I just want to give a testimony, you know, the Lord, I got saved and you know, Angel Gabriel came to me and preached the word of God to me and I was just, I was like, man, that was a powerful message and I, and I just gave my life to Christ and Angel Gabriel laid his hands upon me and prayed a sinner's prayer. You, you will never find, it's just, it's just not something you will find. It's not in the Bible and it's not, you just won't find it. Now, you might, people might say they have a, you know, an experience with an angel of the Lord that appears to them and tells them something but certainly not preaching to them. God has left the preaching of the gospel to his ambassadors. Are you with me? We are, we, are ambas uh, we are ambassadors of Christ. You represent the kingdom of God on earth. That's where your difference is felt. When people know that there's something about you that's just different. See, I, I love it when I'm in a work environment and the guys can't chat nonsense man, because there is, man, that sister, she's born again. She, um, and people, it's not like you're telling them, hey, when, when I'm here, no cussing, no swearing, no chat nonsense, no chatting bad thing. You don't say it, but the mere fact that they know you were saved, you were born again, your presence brings a difference. Instantly, the moment that sinner way comes out, they say, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. They say, I apologize to you. You're like, man, what? I haven't done anything. But because they know somehow your righteousness shines through. But the moment they know they can influence you, you're gone. Hello? You will, that's it. But you have to stand your ground. And so your difference counts when your difference is felt by the people out there, whether it's your friends and family. So we are, the Bible says the light of the world. When you read Matthew 5, Jesus says you don't take a light, referring to a light in a lampstand or what you, you would call, you know, a you know, candle also. He says you don't put it under a bed. It doesn't make sense. You put it on a lampstand where it can brighten up the whole place. Back then, there was no electricity like we know it. They would have a, a lentil uh, tin or lantern that they would have 
or they would have the uh, candles as they would light up the whole place. That's how light was all around. And so, how about what? That's how they had light. They didn't have all the fluorescent lights and the light bulbs that we have that came up during the you know the early uh, you know twentieth century that came in and and it was nice and that's wonderful. They don't have that. So you don't take a, a candle and light it up and put it under a bed. It will burn the bed. It, it serves no purpose there. But you put a candle where it can brighten up the place, where you can see clearly. That's how Jesus said, our light. Guess what he said in Matthew 5, I believe it's verse 12. He says, so let your light so shine before all men that they will see your good works and do what? Glorify God in heaven. That is how our difference is felt. When our light shines, not when we're conforming according to the scripture, Paul says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. He says, what has Christ got to do with Belial? What has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? What has the, the children of God got to do? What has unbelievers or believers got to do with unbeliever. The moment you start mixing it, you start diluting yourself. As I close today, have you ever seen sinners do not, now when I say sinners, I'm talking about person that's unsaved. They don't act as if I'm ashamed and I'm unsaved. They don't care. I'm saying, what does that mean? I'm so, I, I live my life, uh, they drink smoke, uh, they make noise, they don't care. But the moment you start bringing the reality of their state and their lives as you start speaking, first of all, they listen to the person that's, that's spoken, then they look at the person's life. If what the person has spoken matches with how they live their lives, you have a strong conviction upon that person. Now, if what you said does not match how you live, you become a hypocrite. You become powerless. You become a mockery to the unbelieving. Look at them. This is their Christian. Look what they're doing. If that's what a Christian is, I'm having none of it. You all know what I'm talking about. So for our, our difference to count, it must be felt by what we say and how we live. And that's what I want to leave with you tonight as we, as we go on and we're going to pray and lay hold of God. You know, the Bible tells us about uh, in, in Acts chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible talks about how uh, Peter and John in chapter 3, the Bible said they were going through the gate called Beautiful. They saw this man that was, you know, obviously he's, he's, he's sick, he's, he needs healing. The man asked for money. And he said, hey, see what we're going to have now, but what we have, we give unto you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. This man could not walk. He, he, they prayed for him because their lives, they lived their lives godly and righteous. The man gets up and started walking. The Bible says he's walking, leaping, and, and, uh, and praising God. He's, he's rejoicing. The people, there's a commotion because of this healing that's happened. Uh, uh, Peter and John starts preaching to the multitude. People are listening to the message. Uh, a miracle is taking place. Uh, they are convicted. Uh, God's moving. It is so powerful. Hundreds are listening to this message. We get to chapter 4 now. And the so-called religious people of that time, the, uh, the Sadducees, the, the chief high priest, and all of these uh, crazy religious people are vexed because they can see that Peter and John are influential. And I'm drawing this so close along me. They can see that, man, they're influencing the crowd. So they took a hold of them, brought them into the council to try and force them not to preach. And Peter got up and said, what do you want us to do? Do you want us to obey God or man? He says, I don't care what man thinks, I would rather obey God. He said, what do you, do you, do you want me to not obey God and now listen to you to listen to man he says, we are not going to do anything but preach the gospel. And the Bible accounts in verse 4, verse 13, of, or rather chapter 4, verse 13 of Acts, book of Acts. It says, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were uneducated 
and untrained men, and they marveled and realized that they had been with Jesus. What they really mean by uneducated and untrained is uneducated and untrained in the way of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They would, this would be the modern day professors and the, uh, basically these guys didn't go to uni. That's the best way to put it. They were not your, they were fishermen. They were common that would just work normal jobs. They didn't go to up the school where they would up become scholars and uh, be well educated and speak in a very, uh, uh, you know, with Queen's English and use certain vocabularies that would, that would, you know, that would dazzle the multitude. They didn't do that. They were just common fishermen that spoke straight. But they also noticed that they had been with Jesus. These men, they were proud to wear the badge, we are disciples of Jesus. They were proud to say, we follow Jesus. They were proud to say, we are not going to give up that way. They were proud to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the multitude are going to listen. They tried to stop them, but they could not stop them because they could see the difference in them. They were not like the Sadducees and Pharisees. They were different. They were like Jesus. Let the world see Jesus in you. Let the world see Christ in you. Let the world see that hope of glory inside of you. How you live. How you talk. Now, God doesn't want us to be perfect, but we're striving towards perfection in Jesus. I close today very quickly. Mention these few things. Be, be a different person that God wants you to be. Be that different person that God wants, God wants you to be. Be that, trans, can I say, transformative person that God has desired you to be. That means you are transformed from the inside. Be different from the world. Be influential by influencing people through Jesus. See, we're not talking about being influential in business. That's fine. That's in the business world. Influential in education. That's fine. Influential in other things. But be influential by influencing people to Jesus. God has not called us to just come to church, go back home, hide in between church and home. No one knows who we are. And we come to church, praise him, wrestle, and go home. And in between church and home, we kind of hide. No one knows who we are. And then we come to church and hey, the Lord is good, isn't he? Powerful by his grace, yes, yeah, wonderful. It's all good. And you go home, and between home and church, no one knows who you are. And between home, church, uh, you know, work, work too, no one knows who you are. You just kind of flow in and out. You kind of escape, you know, spiritual, whatever you want to call it. They're, 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 they, they just hide their Christianity. God does not want that. Your Christianity needs to be out in the open. Look at someone today and say, out in the open. It needs to be out in the open where people were wondering. Man, what, what is so different about you? Why are you so changed? It's because of Jesus. Amen. Well, there's a, oh, here, where's your cross? It's inside. I don't need to carry it. Amen. Hello? Oh, why don't you come and see? Come and follow. And, and you might find people that are coming. They're waiting for the stained glass windows. They're looking for the uh, Mona Mary. They can't see. They can't see the, they're looking for all the ornaments and the, and, and all the, you know, vessels that they might see in a modern traditional church, but they come in a, you know, office building. Are you, are you joking? <laughs> the Spirit of God is here. Oh, Amen. 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 That is the difference. And when our light, the light of God in us is not just to be kept within us, it is to shine because the more you spread yourself, the more you grow. The stronger you become. Are you with me? The more that God is able to use you. Don't hide your light. Let it shine. Let it shine. Because that, that's what makes you different. Because you are in Christ. You are meant to be different. You're meant to be different. And Paul, as I close, rebuked this church in telling them, he says, I will be your father and you shall be my sons and daughters. And when that's the case, people will start seeing how different they are and the impact they can make. You are different 
Celebrate your difference in Jesus. Someone say amen. amen. Let's bow our heads and close in prayer. Hallelujah.